Mayor, members of the council, we, um, we really need to pray. Father, uh, we come before you. We pray that in all the things that happen, in all the leadership, in all the decisions, that you would, that you would guide us, give us each wisdom, give our leaders discernment, imagination, compassion for each other, Fill them with confidence, Lord, with courage, with, with humility, with all the things that are necessary to serve the people of Los Banos in the way that you've called them to do so. I pray, Lord, that we would all show grace for each other as we make mistakes, and we will. That we would lift up each other as we, as we do well, as we succeed, as we find victories, and we will. And I pray, Lord, that as we fall and as we fall short, that we would lift each other up help each other shake the dust from each other and just walk along and continue the path, Lord. We need you. We are in this together and I pray that we would never forget that. So bring us together by your unifying spirit. Make us one as you are one. Make us your people. And make this a time, Lord, where even you are glorified in all that we do. So bless us, we pray this in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Commander Drum, you want to lead us in the pledge? All right, we'll call this uh, meeting to order at 6 o'clock. And roll call, please. Here, we have a quorum. We move to uh, item 4, consideration of the approval of the agenda. Do I have a motion? Councilmember Jones? So moved. Do I have a second? Councilmember Lambert? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right, thank you. All right, let's move on to presentations. Hi there, how are you? All right, so I do have a, a definitely a very special presentation, a certificate of recognition. I kind of just want to give some backstory. Uh, Vidya came to meet with me a while back and was telling me about the nonprofit uh, that she's been a part of that's been going on, and it focuses on helping children with reading glasses. Uh, some kids that aren't able to get eye care and to you know see an eye doctor and then to have the glasses and so uh, we discussed what a resource that is and I'm fortunate to have her come to Los Manos. Well, she left that meeting and met with other groups like Rotary and the school board and the school district and then now has partnered uh, and I'm really happy to say that I want to thank her for her dedication and support she's given to helping more than 300 in Central Valley students by providing free eye, eye exams and corrective glasses including 279 of those kids living in our city. So this is a certificate of recognition to you, again, and ANAC for facilitated eyeglasses. So thank you so much. You got to pay attention to that one. Or... All right, thank you so much. Move on to item six, public forum. Members of the public may address the city council member on any item of public interest that is within the jurisdiction of the city council. This includes agenda and non-agenda items. No action will be taken on non-agenda items. Speakers are limited to a five-minute pre presentation. Detailed guidelines are posted on the city council information table in the back. This time, I'd like to invite the public to come forward and just a reminder to silence or turn off your phones. Good evening, Mayor, Council, and staff. My name is Blanche George and I live in the downtown area, a proud residence of the downtown area. Two weeks ago I spoke to you about a trap and release program that we started. But I wanted to let you know about what we accomplished last week, which was on a Wednesday. We, uh, it takes us two days to prep for this. 
but we were able to um, spay and neuter 62 local dogs with the program um, through the city that um, the friends of the uh, that Levi had worked with and then the city has continued Ivan Mendez and the team have con the city team have continued to get more and more grants and we're lucky for that so we're happy to always be the hands to help so there was 62 dogs a few cats uh, jumped on board and um, away we went uh, five time trips back and forth back and forth back and forth as we do this I just want to let you know that the, we'll be coming out with more programs, more assistance. Secretly, we do trap and release. We also, of course, assist, um, of course, the microchipping, and of course, the licensing. There's so much that is being done. But daily, there are um, cats that are going and they're getting fixed daily. And so that impact is really crucial for our community. But additionally, there are other rescues from other counties, other cities, other states that are, I guess we're just trading, uh, where actually we are able to these rescues are able to take our kittens our cats so then that way we're balancing lots of things but critically important is from the top your guys's direction the staff's direction the police chief its officers sergeant mendez the code enforcement the police department the shelter employees. Everybody is working together. Everybody is a team. And we'd like to thank you guys for your continuous efforts. Because personally, what scares me is that no, there won't be a change. There won't be a change. But I want to let you guys know that we pray for you guys all the time. And we thank you for your support because everybody has animals. This is the interest of everybody. And we would like for this to continue on and on and on. It's going to be a glorious time in the future. Thank you very much for your time. We appreciate it. Thank you. Hi, my name is Kathy Ballard. Did you guys miss me? Oh, no smiles, I guess not. Um, I'm, I'm here to congratulate Cammie. Thank you. For a job well done in having the homeless removed from behind the rail trail behind her house. This shows that coming to city council and confronting you and talking to you does more than complaining on Facebook and ranting to your neighbor at Walmart. Um, it needs to be presented from them in this building. Um, I also wanted to say um, that I also congratulate Cami for teaching Mr. Begonia how to use the phone. Um, Josh Pinero, Mr. Yanez, and Mr. Begonia called her the night before they removed everyone to let them know that you guys were the ones that did it. But yet nobody in the city knew that this was happening. Um, I'm glad you, you know, felt the need to finally call someone, Mr. Begonia, to tell her what you have done. I've just returned from a long overdue vacation. Um, mostly I only get maybe two days away from my store, sometimes three, in over 30 years. Um, while I was gone, I traveled to Oregon, Washington, and Montana. Um, every city that I went to had businesses closing down. Um, they were preparing for the worst. They were making a rainy day fund. These are craftspeople that I spoke to, business owners, because um, I visited a few Baskin Robbins. And 
I look at my city that's paying out anywhere from three to six million dollars a month and wondering what do we know that they don't? Why are they planning for a dump in the economy when you don't get sales tax, when you don't get property tax, where your investments don't make as much as they have in the past? I just see us spending money, um, relocating our whole office at a cost to refurbish and put new carpet, new chairs, new tables. I know they're needed, but our policemen um, sat in a crate for the longest time. I know Mr. Lampert said that he was um, excited that you were part of it. That police station has been paid for by taxpayer funds. In 2008, we passed Measure P. In 2018, we passed Measure H. Chief Knapp was part of putting together, building the police station, and followed up with Chief Breezy. This didn't happen overnight. You guys sat in the chairs during the time that you approved to break ground and to build the station. But the public, the police, the city, there's a huge amount of people involved. It's not just your guys' faces up there that did it. And I really get hurt when that's done. Um, I looked at the cities that we went to, and they have put shopping center items on hold because they just can't afford it. They don't think it's important. They'd rather take care of other things that are more important to their citizens. And what you've done in the last year and a half scares me. And all of it, to me, is being done because it's a political year. And you want to show the public that, man, I'm working my butt off. Why now? Why wasn't it done a long time ago and as we went along? Thank you. And since I just got home from camp, um, I probably won't stay for the whole meeting, but I will watch it. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Greg Hostetler. I'm here to talk about Vineyard Drive. Brett Jones, you made a statement which was untrue a number of meetings ago. You should have known better. I've asked my staff to pull up the development agreement, and I have it here. In June 13th of 1998, 9, 10 a.m. was recorded by the city of Los Banos. It has a premium on the building permit of $675 per permit for the resolution of the connection of Vineyard Drive. That was done in 1998. Over 3,000 homes been built over there since then. And what has the city done? And you said that I didn't do it, and I dumped it on the city. That was untrue. And I said that was a lie. And it still stands as a lie because you haven't corrected your information. The funds were not to be commingled. It says in the agreement right here, four places, signed by the city and the developer and recorded in the county. Public records are here. Funds are not to be commingled. Where is the money? And now you guys have meetings with Caltrans and all this, and those people lived there since 1998 with no connection to the freeway. And you said I dumped it. I did not. The record stands on its own. You did an RFP on the 10th of 23, May 10th of 23, an RFP, refer, request for a proposal. But what have you done since then? You've been through how many engineers? Fred, Neron, Jose, and now Chuck. Nothing's taken place, and now you had a meeting here not long ago to make the public feel like you're doing something ahead of the election. That's what I think you're doing. So you're the DA, I have it with me. The other thing, you failed to produce your text messages as required by law relative to the city. And the lawsuit's been filed on that, and you'll be served on that if you haven't been already. The public has the right to know the transparency 
on this dais up here is marginal, and in your case, it's pretty serious. You failed to produce emails. 800 pages of paper sent on the request is called a public record act. It's state law. Only 89 emails. Interesting. In a year and a half. That's all. And the budget is in 23-24 was $107 million. I think that you're financially illiterate. I looked at some of your history where you filed bankruptcy in March 18th of 2013 of $153,061.51 and you dumped it. You like that word, dumped it. I have it right here. The Fresno Bankruptcy Court right here and you signed it. It's right here. You dumped it on over 30 creditors and you said I dumped. That's the word you used. It's right here. There's four or five copies back there. Anybody wants to see it in a federal court. You said you only made $850 a month. In this document, it says. So you refuse to have a session to record the budget, review the budget for 24-25. Deborah Lewis requested that, as I recall. And it was denied. Her request was denied. I call that financial illiteracy. It's for public review. The public should have a right to see these things. One and it's bad business. One I want to talk to you about Shaughnessy Village. You were on the council when you proved it as complete. You voted to approve it as complete, and the city engineer approved it to be complete, and you own it, but you blame it on me. You make up those things that I didn't finish it. I can't finish it. I don't own it. It's complete, according to the council. You approved it. You were on the council, and you're on the council when it was completed and the park didn't get built. Over six years you've been on the council and millions of dollars collected, and you haven't done one thing in six years to get that done. Don't blame it on Greg Hostetler. Those residents have paid all the money they were owed out there. That on the on their permit, thirty-four hundred dollars in traffic fees, and you guys haven't done anything. Six years you've been here. They haven't been here that long. You have, and you blame it on me. Time. Have a nice evening. Thank you. And to follow that. Um, I am here, happy as a clam. I am not one bad thing to say, not one complaint. I am ecstatic. Thank you so much. I so appreciate the homeless being removed from the trail. The first night, I opened up my windows. I turned off my air conditioner and let the breeze blow in, and it was amazing. Um, you did a fabulous job cleaning everything up. There's not a stitch of paper. There's nothing hanging off the fences. It looks wonderful. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I so appreciate it. Um, it did take perseverance and a Supreme Court ruling, but that's all in the past. I don't care. It's wonderful, and thank you. And Mr. Heim, I would love to work with you on how we can get trees replaced. So, thank you. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, City Council, staff, my name is John Cates. You guys haven't seen me for a while. Um, I just came up to, uh, to address, once again, some of the positives that, that have, have gone on in this community over the last year and a half or two. Um, and uh, I'll, start, I'll start with this. Um, so there have been quite a few uh, capital projects that have been taking place over the last year, year and a half, that hadn't been done in what I've heard 10, 15, 20 years, maybe 30. Um, some of those were well needed. They were overdue. Um, one of the biggest right now, um, I was just talking to Blanche about that, was the animal shelter. It, it's, it's amazing that it has sat that long before any action was taken. Um, 
I remember I only walked in there once, maybe twice, and maybe 20 years ago. And I couldn't believe that that was Los Banos' animal shelter. But I wasn't actively involved in the community at the time, so it just kind of kept that thought to myself. At any rate, um, there's a lot of crit criticisms about broken processes. I don't know how that comes up. If, if, if you are outside of City Hall, the offices, the walls, how do you know there's broken processes? I don't know. And as a planning commissioner and commission chair, some of the information coming out into the media, um, it's very questionable how that information gets out there. I mean, I don't, there's things that came out in the paper, the only paper we got, sadly, uh, and I'm going, oh, geez, planning commissioner, I don't even know that stuff. How does that information come out? I, I don't know. At any rate, um, one of the things that I've learned over the course of time is that growing up and becoming a mature retired guy is that um, there is this, uh, this um, philosophical term called Occam's razor. Now Occam's came up with that Greek philosopher years ago, I believe. Um, and basically in simple terms, it's the simplest answer is the truth. So the information is getting out to our media may or may not be getting out, should be getting, getting, gotten out there, and it's getting out there. What's the explanation? It's not this and that, this and that, this and that. It's probably A to B. Who is that A? And who is that B? Um, there have been uh, probably the largest uh, couple of, well, at least two of major projects that have happened have been in Miss Lewis's district um, and with with Miss Lewis sitting on the council for a good 10 years or so um, none of those pro those two projects weren't initiated why you, you're the longest sitting council member on this dais and those projects were never were never initiated under you um, so one of the other things because I was here during the budget review June uh, June 5th I believe um, the PBIT uh, item came up and it was not classified as a public hearing and Ms. Lewis threw a fit because she wanted to talk about it but under the guise of the Brown Act unless it's agendized as an actionable item you should know this because you're a veteran up on the dais you can't talk about it and you threw a fit I don't get it you know, at, there was a time when I first came on the Planning Commission, I was looking at you as a mentor, I'm and I don't know, I'm not going to mentor that stuff, I'm not going to mentee that. Um, at any rate, uh, there have been so many things going on, and um, I'm just going to let you know, I, I'll never, I will never give you or any of the other negative, angst-driven, horrible things that people are doing to these guys, the respect and support that I do give all of these people. Ken, Josh, Paul, Doug, and Brett, as well as Mr. Vaughn. It's too much. And I'll just close with this. It's a, it's a man's opinion that the critics who seem to be organized and coordinated would rather see the city fail then the city manager and the city council succeed. And that's sad. Time. So I'll just say this. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> if your hatred for one man that's your time. is Sorry. greater and your love for the city, you may be the problem. Uh, hello. Hi. Uh, my name's Norma Blackwood. If my voice sounds funny, it's because of the air quality, but I'm here about the downtown parking. I've talked to you about it. Today wasn't bad. There was parking, but generally there's not. And I depend on the people being able to park. And I have customers. It's very hard for them to walk. And it really hit home. 
when my brother, and this is coming from my heart, my brother lost his legs in Vietnam when he was 20. He lived without legs for 52 years, never complained. Well, one time he had to walk a block to come get a haircut because there was no parking. Like I said again, never complained. My brother and other people that have handicaps like that shouldn't have to do that. We have no handicap parking where my barbershop's at, that whole area. I know at the drugstore they do. A few parkings down, they have two-hour parking. I would like to know if there's anything that could be done to help people that can't walk that far. I had a customer not long ago. I've done his hair forever because I've been here a long time. He said he went around the block three times, couldn't find a place to park, had to go somewhere else. And he got a messed up haircut. <laughs> well, the last time he was able to find a parking. So my concern is, is there anything that can be done? I was going to wait because I talked to some of the merchants downtown, and they were going to come, but they can't come today. But since I'm here, I thought I'd bring it up. So, is there anything that can be done? That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else in the public? All right. Seeing none, we'll close the public forum. Move on to item seven, consideration of the approval of the consent agenda. Items on the consent agenda are as follows. Warrant numbers 246584 through 246939 in the amount of $1,121,534.44. City Council Resolution number 6822, adopting a revised budget for the 2024-2025 fiscal year as it pertains to expenditures and the Villa Park Impact Fee Fund for the Crest Hills Park Extension in the amount of $446,294.26. City Council Resolution Number 6823, approving a tentative agreement memorandum of understanding by and between the City of Las Banas and the Las Banas Firefighters Association from July 1st, 2024 through June 30, 2027. City Council Resolution Number 6824, amending Division 4 salary schedule employees classifications of the city's policy and procedures manual relating to changes to section F fire and building associated with the LBFFA tentative agreement memorandum of understanding and the items are to be approved as submitted. All right, thank you for that. Uh, any members from council requesting to move any items? Councilmember Lewis. Thank you, Mayor. Yes, I'd like to pull items 7A and 7B. B is in boy. <clears throat> That's correct. Okay. 7A and 7B. Anyone else? No. All right, so let's start with item 7A. Okay, on 7A, there are a couple of checks that I'd uh, like to find out what they were for. And the first one is on page 7. It's check number 246624, written on 8224 to a Ivan Garcia in the amount of $3,727.23. I will take note, um, Council Member Lewis, of this check number. I would have to um, reply back to you and provide you information. This okay, is thank for you. regards to supplies. <clears throat> and um, there were two other ones. Uh, check number 2466862, uh, written on 8924, 
to a Suzanne Mendez for $2,200? And I would assume it would probably be the same answer for that. Um, 862. What is the page? 2011. Okay. It's on page 11 towards the bottom. I will definitely take note of that one to provide that information. Okay, and the last one is check number 246926, written on 812, to a Oscar Daniel Figuero, Figuera uh, Martinez for $64,056.05. Yes, the check is for eighty nine hundred for check two four six nine two six. Oh yes, I'm sorry, I was looking at the wrong line. It is eighty nine hundred. Yes, and that is for animal shelter gates. The payment that we made for for the construction of the animal shelter gates. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay, and that's it on that particular item. All right, move on to item 7B. <clears throat> okay, so this is uh, Mr. Berkson's project. So in reviewing this, um, I noticed that the contract for the completion of, uh, and I assume this is the parking lot uh, for the park, uh, Crest Hills Park over on um, Pioneer, and a flanking um, uh, Gus Balalta Road. <clears throat> Excuse me. The contract was signed on 731-18, and the invoices included in the packet are dated anywhere from 2018 and 2019 for contractors and suppliers. And then on um, May the 2nd, 2023, we received an invoice from Pioneer Development for the amount requested tonight of $446,294 and change. And that invoice said that the payment was due May 14th, 2023. So my question is, um, is there a reason why this bill wasn't paid in the fiscal year budget of 22-23 or at the latest in the fiscal year budget of 23-24? <clears throat> Councilman Lewis, um, I think Ms. Sosa can uh, speak to it. I, was, I wasn't here. There is some history on this, uh, and we had to, I think, at least sort the cost out to find uh, and get, just, get um, substantiation of those costs. So this <clears throat> invoice with the backup that is included in the packet was only received in June of this year. And after staff's review, um, staff brought this item forward. Okay, so do we, do, does the city date stamp its invoices when they're received from uh, other companies that are requesting payment when, when we receive them in? Um, I think that would be maybe an answer for the finance director, but um, I would say it probably depends. Um, in this particular item, it was through the city attorney's office, so it was not directly received through the finance department. It was received through our legal counsel. Okay, and, and uh, do you know the date or approximately when this was received? This year. Um, it definitely was June of this year, and, um, um, and it was at, towards the end of the month. I believe the actual date was June 25th, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. All right. Thank you. That was all, that was my final question, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Um, yes, yeah, Stacy. I actually had kind of the similar question to Councilmember Lewis. Is that, um, and I see it came from from Stonefield um, Homes, the, the project. Is that a normal practice that they send us an invoice dated 13 months prior to us receiving it? Uh, no, that, that is not typical. Um, 
I do believe that legal counsel has been asking um, for a um, essentially a, a tabulation of their various invoices with backup um, since this item has been discussed. This item, though, has been discussed probably since May 2023. So we have been in discussions. We finally received all of the documentation that we needed to be able to move forward. Okay. Thank you. All right. We want to vote on the consent agenda as one motion. Do I have a motion for that? Yes. Okay. Is that a motion? Council Member Lewis? Is that a, is that a motion? Well, I'll make a motion to approve the consent agenda as submitted. Thank you. Uh, Council Member Lambert. I'll second. All right. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Motion passed. Thank you. Move on to item eight. Designation of voting delegate and alternates for the 2024 League of California Cities LCC Annual Conference and Expo being held October 16th through the 18th, 2024 in Long Beach, California. Do we have a, a nomination or a motion? Councilmember Lambert. Uh, I nominate Brett. Uh, Councilmember Alec Jones. Nomination for Councilmember Jones to serve as our delegate. Do we have a second? Councilmember Begonia? All right. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. And then for an alternate, do we have a motion for an alternate? Councilmember Lambert? Uh, Councilmember Begonia. Motion for nomination for Councilmember Begonia. Do we have a second? I don't, I, I don't know if you want to second yourself, but you, you. Councilmember Jones? Yeah, I'll second that. All right. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Motion passes. Thank you. I was like pulling teeth for a second. All right. Move on to item eight. Uh, I'm sorry, item nine, advisement of public notices. We have no reports. Item 10, city manager report. Thank you, Mayor. Appreciate it. Um, Blanche, she came up. Um, absolutely, we've been doing a lot of work there at the uh, animal shelter. So I think we've done about like six clinics so far um, out there at the animal shelter, spayed and neuter event. So we are really excited about that and the progress that we've done to her point. Um, we did about 60, uh, 62 local dogs. We've been continuing to do cats um, uh, out there as well. Um, so I'm just really proud and thankful for all the hard work that the team has uh, continued to do out there. So it's really exciting about that. Um, also, um, we're continuing to get that project move along there at the uh, community center of the uh, solar panels that are going up there. So if you get a chance, go take a peek. It's looking really good. So really excited about that. Um, the other one that was really neat, just the other night over there at one of our parks that we went and uh, got done on the corner of 7th Street and Pacheco, there just continues to be a lot of activity out there. So. Um, it's really exciting to see that and all the hard work that we're doing there. Um, the other thing is I would like to make a comment to Kathy Ballard who came up here today um, was just talking about how it scares her um, that we're getting things done in the city. Well, I find that uh, just quite interesting that it scares her that we're paving roads. Uh, it scares her that, you know, we're uh, fixing parks, we're trimming trees, um, we're ensuring that our wastewater treatment plant has enough capacity. Uh, which it did not and had been neglected for 20 plus years. Um, that we're investing into our city infrastructure and fixing pipeline um, and uh, water and stormwater underneath um, uh, the streets. That we're investing in police vehicles and, um, and fire vehicles and we're investing in equipment. Um, that is why we pay taxes in, in order for us to be able to get this money that we spend uh, or that we receive and, and spend it responsibly on these things. But to say that we can't spend any money to fix our animal shelter and, and to do the Ag Sports Complex and to do the Noah Jones Ballpark. I don't think that's why uh, we pay taxes just to get this money and not fix these things, uh, things that have been neglected for 20 plus years. Um, and to sit here and talk and act as if you're proud that the police department had to sit in such a decrepit state for such a long time, that doesn't make me happy. 
Um, and so for folks that are in City Hall, it is deteriorated to a point where it does need to be um, uh, updated and uh, remodeled. And so hence, that's why you know we are doing such things to get that done. So that is why we pay taxes as citizens to be able to take care of these things in a responsible and a fiscally responsible manner when we bring the budget forward and when we did have a public hearing um, for that. Um, so nothing out of the ordinary was done there. Also, um, I'm proud of the work you know, the team has done and we've uh, done in removing of the homeless. Um, I did not need any particular member of the public to come and talk to me, um, one, to teach me how to use a phone. Um, I, nobody here in the member of the public taught me how to use a phone um, to be able to call people. Um, and so um, I, we actually as a city had been working quite aggressively on addressing the homeless situation way back in 2021. Uh, when I was here and we actually uh, worked on moving them the first time there was a uh, place where we located them uh, put cameras and services behind the ranch and mobile home park um, we went and did that then also the city um, actually without action from having anybody um, in the public um, having to come in as if they needed to you know pressure us to do something we've actually been quite proactive with the council and uh, with the mayor himself to um, uh, start a housing division and with the housing division uh, you know, uh, uh, under the guidance of, of Stacy Sue's and her team, they went and applied for a grant, and we didn't need to be told to go apply for a grant. We received $11.8 million. Um, and then on top of that, we were just awarded recently another $2.5 million um, for that grant under the housing division, with or without, you know, anybody um, having to push us. You know, I do appreciate the conversations, interactions that I have had with uh, uh, the people in the public, and I thank you for them, and I thank you for your comments, because it was a lot of hard work that we did and put together. But... Um, for you know, uh, 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 Kathy to come up here and make such claims to us that the, we only work because people are calling us, getting on our case. Well, it's not entirely correct because we're working very uh, diligently every single day to do good work. So, um, on the homeless side, $11.8 million received, another $2.5 million that we received. Um, we've also had the team at the animal shelter working extremely hard, and we received within the last year alone $250 plus thousand dollars in grant money for the animal shelter, like never ever been done before. Um, so we're really excited about that. And then um, we've also got a really um, sizable grant for um, our Colorado ballpark. So, um, you know, that's what we're uh, here to do is to go out there and work hard and find this money um, and to continue to try to uh, make things better um, uh, here in the community. So um, we appreciate the feedback, appreciate the conversations, but do know that, um, you know, we are working hard every day to make things better. And I thank you for um, your follow-up on that. You and I have had some conversations, and um, they've been very helpful, and we look forward to continuing to try to make things better in the community every day. Thank you, Mayor. All right, item 11, report update, Merced County Associated Governments, Peninsula Clean Energy, Measure V Committee, San Joaquin Valley Air Pollution Control District, and Las Banas Property in downtown. And we'll start with uh, Council Member Lewis on the Valley Air Pollution. No, nope. no report. All right, thank you pushing buttons over here. Uh, MCAG, we did have, have had a great meeting uh, this last week. Uh, one thing I just want to, again, express, express to the public is please take advantage of our bus program. We have an amazing bus program. It is in the city. If you're a college student, your ride is free. If you're a veteran, your ride is free. Um, and I, I, my understanding is they may not even charge until October uh, for different rides. So please take advantage of that, especially students going out to Merced College. Um, take advantage of the bus program. Um, I just had someone from New Bethany contact me. There were some issues with transportation of people there, um, and I connected them with the paratransit program from the bus, and so they will come and pick people up. And so, again, take advantage of those resources. It's really cool. There's an app you can actually schedule your ride on the bus. So, again, not, not to take away from anybody doing Uber or Lyft, but uh, take advantage of, of free transportation if you can. Uh, that's all I have for that. Uh, downtown? Okay. All right. And moving to item 12, City Council Member Reports, starting with Council Member Jones. Report tonight. All right. Uh, Council Member Lewis. Thank you. A uh, couple of things. Um, <clears throat> I received a, a message recently about the work at the dam. Uh, as some of us know within the community, um, two years ago, the federal government and reclamation uh, were working together to uh, first of all, build the dam face up to reinforce it. And secondly, they're going to uh, raise the dam 10, possibly to 20 feet. Um, but there is talk about laying closure on 152. When it happens, I don't know. Uh, I'm hoping that uh, reclamation and the federal government will keep 
our city informed, keep Caltrans informed, because we do have a larger, large community, uh, commuter population who goes over the hill every day, and for them to know ahead of time when these lanes are going to be closed and which lanes will be closed um, will be necessary for them to be able to leave at a decent time. It's Whenever that happens, it's kind of be a nightmare. Um, so um, it's going to happen, you know, exactly when it happens. It could be another year from now. It could be two years from now, but talk is already in the wind about that. Um, the other thing I, I would like to bring up, and I'm glad uh, to hear the city manager say that there's a sizable uh, grant coming out for Colorado Park. I, you know, I would like to know what that grant amount is. Um, because that, you know, that's been our oldest park in our community, and uh, we've upgraded just about every uh, community park within our neighborhoods and other community parks that are outside of neighborhoods, and this one is still in deplorable condition. Uh, I was out there uh, the other night, I think it was Tuesday, Tuesday night I was out there, and um, these are some things that I think need some real immediate repair uh, in the parking lot. Uh, I took a picture of a piece of rebar that's sticking out, and the edge of the rebar is um, open to uh, the air where somebody could trip over it and actually um, damage their skin or hurt themselves. It's not like the rebar is still buried into the concrete. It's actually open. Uh, there are several sidewalks that are extreme trip hazards that I think we need to try to at least even those out for the time being until the park is rehabbed. Um, multiple trees, and we've done a lot of tree trimming in our community, but there are multiple trees out there in that park that the roots are growing up on the, on the top of the ground, uh, trip hazards for grandmothers, parents, and all that are out there going to see their children play baseball or football. And there's a fence on the far west side that seems to be coming apart that we probably just need to get somebody up there to get that cyclone fence back up. Um, and the last thing I saw was a very old, outdated fountain, and a button had been pushed on it. Uh, the fountain wouldn't turn itself off, and it's leaking from the bottom. Um, and I have photos of it where it was leaking down, down the, the sidewalk. So um, it doesn't appear that that fountain is serving a purpose. I wouldn't want to drink out of it. I don't think any parent would want their child drinking out of it. So it, it might be a good idea just to move that, uh, take that away and cap it off. Um, so again, I'm, I'm glad to hear that there's a grant coming up for Colorado Park. Uh, it's way past due. It's the oldest park in our community. And um, you know the, the parents and the children who play and practice there are, are deserving to get that park rehab as well. Thank you. All right, thank you. Council Member Lambert? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, so I, I am going to comment back on uh, the police station. Uh, there's a couple questions. Uh, first, the previous council before this council, uh, we did pass uh, the budget for the, the new police station. So you want to ask yourself, in the past 15 years, uh, I was told that we never had a budget to, to, to uh, build a new police station. They, it was put in several times, but never got built. So. Uh, Yes, I do. Uh, the council before us, I do take uh, pride in being part of that council that passed the the budget to have the new police station built. So that's all I got to say, Mr. Mayor. All right, thank you, Councilmember Lambert. Or I'm sorry, Begonia. Um, just to address the comments earlier, um, you know, I don't know which credit I was taken or have ever taken for a getting those people moved out and where that information came from. Uh, I am happy for the people of Pitzer Way uh, to have some peace and quiet finally. And uh, I, I don't want no credit. I just only wish we could have done that sooner, of course, but now it's happened. And uh, hopefully we keep that clean for you guys. And uh, also we had a movie night in the park, in College Greens Park. And I, and I will admit I, I had a football scrimmage, so I didn't get to attend it, but it was right by my house, and I know Joe does an incredible job over there, so I just got to see the tail end of it. Um, speaking of football, if anybody's looking to be entertained, it is high school football season starting um, this Thursday night. Uh, Los Banos 
freshman team kick off their first game at our new uh, at the new stadium there, the new field um, against Mountain House, and uh, the varsity and JV will be at uh, Dos Palos for our old longest rival. Also, our Pacheco Panthers will be starting their season in uh, Atwater. Um, and I don't know if we'll be have, have another council meeting by then, but uh, in three weeks, we'll be having our Crosstown Clash with Pacheco Panthers at, at their stadium, Los Banos High School versus uh, Pacheco High School. Um, also, if you go out to a, a freshman game uh, Thursday night, you get to see, uh, after their game, you get to see the flag football girls. That's a new sport in high school, so they're all putting in hard work, too. And I just want to wish all the uh, athletes of all sports, not just football or flag football, uh, good luck on their season. Stay focused in class and hope you have fun out there. That's it. All right. Guess I get to go last. Um, so let me let me just address a couple things in the public forum um, as far as, again, making the phone call the night before. I, I did that because I told her that's what I was going to do. I, I said the minute we can have this done and the authority to do it, um, again, I want to do um, she absolutely deserves credit for coming here and reminding us what our jobs are. Okay, um, That doesn't mean if she wouldn't have shown up, we wouldn't be doing the exact same thing. But again, that is the purpose of this thing right here, is to motivate us and to keep us on task, to hold us accountable. And so I appreciate anybody that comes in. Whatever you say, public or negative, I don't care. That's your job, and it's my job to listen. And so again, I, I appreciate everybody that comes forward. Um, but also understand, too, that the way my mind works is I'm just goal oriented, period. So if, if she would have missed 10 meetings, that wouldn't have changed anything that, that gone on. But I am glad that you came and, and you've been able to be, to be vocal and we found a resolution. Um, now it's time to move into the next phase of this. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask to schedule a meeting uh, with any of our nonprofits and any of our church groups in the city to talk about what we can do now that we have a designated area for our homeless. And so I'll be reaching out and kind of squaring that away because, again, now that we know they're in one safe location, what resources can we bring to them to help be successful? Um, and so I'm going to get try to get that meeting scheduled as soon as possible. Um, as far as the, the comment that was made, um, you know, going out of town and comparing us to other cities, um, and as far as I heard the statement about our financial investments, um, I can tell you uh, evidence-based that our financial investments in this city uh, are no longer getting us five figures uh, in a six month period as opposed to seven figures now in investments. And so we are able to do what we've been doing and make the accomplishments and put money back in the bank. And so that's something I'm very proud of that we've been doing. We've only been, been able to do it because we have city staff uh, with, again, the forefront of, of financial thinking. And so, again, we're doing what needs to be get done. What, what I think the public may not understand is tax funds means programmed funds means we should be and have to be spending it. It is your tax money. Um, and so you want to see a return on your investment. Um, as far as uh, the comments that were made about the 1998 Vineyard Connection, I don't know. I was 19. I, I don't know what we did when I was 19 years old. So I can't really answer for anything that we did on Vineyard Drive. Um, I will tell you that just during my time in office, again, my job is for the citizens to hold me accountable. And if that means we have to hold a developer accountable, um, rather somebody signed it off two or three decades ago, I don't care. Um, I only care about what we do forward and that it's the right thing to do and that it means getting it done for the right reasons and that's for the people of the city. Um, PRA requests, I've been asked this question, I just um, uh, answered a media question about this. Um, I'm sorry, there are no secret text messages or emails. I will tell you that when I want to discuss something with a city manager, I might text him and say, give me a call. And that's it. And then he picks up the phone and calls me. So again, I don't have a lot of time to go back and forth with texts and emails and I'm not that kind of person. I just directly would rather communicate so nothing gets lost in translation. So, uh, again, if, if somebody would like to come to my office and open emails, I'm more than happy to do that. You can print whatever you want. Just bring your own ink cartridge. Uh, it's probably going to be less than a page. Um, and then, lastly, uh, the handicap parking issue downtown. Um, and I, I don't know what we can do with that, how that works, what, what the, the process is for doing that, but I definitely would like to, to hear staff's recommendation on, on what that is and what we can do to, to accommodate that. So. Um, with that, we are going to go into item 13, which is a closed session. Conference with labor negotiators pursuant to government code 54957.6. Agency designated representative, city manager Panero, city attorney Vaughn, human resource director Melanie, finance director Portillo, legal counsel, uh, employee organizations, the Los Banos Police Officers Association. And we'll report out.
All right, we're back from closed session at 722. Uh, staff has been given direction by council. Uh, I look for a motion to adjourn. Councilmember Lambert. So moved. Councilmember Jones. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, meeting adjourned at 722.